Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. We're here today on our first Cabral host call of the weekend, just opening up that magical word document we use every single week to see what new questions have come in from the community. Always excited to get to your questions. I really am. I mean, I love being able to see uh, what's going on all around the world. We've got people you know, from Australia, from Europe, from all over the world, basically, that we work with. And I picked those because they're basically the opposite time zone from us. So when we're doing consultations around, you know, 4.30 in the afternoon, well, it's 6.30 a.m. there. So uh, the truth is, though, we've always done our best to make this a global health community. And so I just want you to know that wherever you are, if we can do something to help, that is what we want to do. Typically, we're always pointing people to cabralsupportgroup.com. That is our free private Facebook group. Over 22,000 people on that group. It's all organic. We've never advertised anything like that. And it's just people coming together to share their successes, to share their struggles, what they need help with, and we're there to help answer your questions. So if you you don't want to wait 12 weeks to get your question answered by me on the weekend Cabral House Calls, do feel free to write in any time to cabralsupportgroup.com. But We are here to go over our community's questions, so let's dive right in. First question is from Christine. Christine says, Dear Dr. Cabral, thank you. As my interest in holistic health has grown, I have listened to many podcasts, and yours has moved up into my favorite spot. Thanks, Christine. Appreciate that. You give valuable information. I trust your intention and integrity. Very inspiring. I did your stress and hormone test and was able to talk to an IHP. One thing that stood out is that my cortisol levels are high, and I should likely avoid intermittent fasting as it is a stress on my body. I am almost 54 years old and still in perimenopause. However, there is a lot of family history of cancer and other disease. I don't want to miss out on the benefits such as autophagy. Is it possible to fast and counteract that stress with supplements such as ashwagandha or anything else? All right, so you're on the right track, and I agree with you. Now you can do both. Here's the great thing about that. like It's it's all about bioindividuality. So um, let's say you are someone that does have higher cortisol. Totally get it, and I understand. All we need to do, honestly, is flip-flop your fast. Most people have been taught to skip breakfast. I'm telling you right now, and I hope that you've been tuning in to the Cabral concept, I share with you the unbiased research. Most people shouldn't skip breakfast. That's the truth. It leads to way higher degrees of heart uh, disease and other issues as well. So please do, do check out that show. It's based on real science. That doesn't mean that you can't do a 12, 14, 16 hour intermittent fast daily, and I recommend that for most people. So, uh, Christine, all we want to do for you is to move that fast into the night. That's it. So if you can stop eating by 5 o'clock, great. So now how many hours till midnight? 7. And then what if you go until 8 a.m.? Well, that's 15 hours, right? Or what if you just go 14 hours till 7 a.m.? Or what if you go to 9 a.m.? That's 16 hours, right? So you don't have to worry about skipping breakfast. You can still get into intermittent fast. And for the vast majority of people, stopping eating earlier in the night is much more Uh, akin to what we would have been doing when there was no electricity and no light, and uh, much healthier from your body. If you track your biometrics, you'll see your HRV scores go up, uh, your deep sleep go up, and much more. So definitely check it out. And then, um, yes, if you have high stress in the morning, you can absolutely use something like calming magnesium or full-spectrum magnesium and adrenal soothe, and, and that would be great as well. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Christine, it looks like maybe Christine's up again as well. Dr. Raul, this is my second question submitted today, so I understand if you can't answer it. I wondered if you'd be able to help people with a phobia to swallowing pills. I'm embarrassed to say that I'm 54 years old and I still need to have food to swallow my vitamins. Imagine my horror when I went to the oral surgeon and I, before the procedure could be done, they handed me a huge pill to swallow. They all searched in their lunch bags for crackers or something, but in the end, I just chewed the pill, yuck, and swallowed it. So many people have tried to help, and I love to show off when they and love to show off when they can swallow a handful of pills at once. I just can't get over this phobia. All right, well, there's two parts to this. I would love you to look up a previous podcast I did on achalasia. All right, it's ACH achalasia. Please look that up at um, stephencabral.com forward slash podcast or 
ask at cabralsupportgroup.com. They'll find the shows on Achalasia. A lot of people with Achalasia are worried about swallowing pills because they can't swallow pills as well because they're so stressed. And Christine, you've already shared with us that you're of high levels of stress, cortisol, right? So it does not allow for the peristaltic movement of the esophagus. So if we fix the stress likely, right, that's the underlying root cause, likely you'll be able to go back to swallowing pills, which would be really helpful. So that's where to start. And then of course, um, for now, most pills can be emptied into a smoothie. And so you can just empty them in a smoothie or a little uh, shot of pomegranate juice or cranberry juice, and then you won't even taste it. All right, thanks for writing in. Diane is up next. My husband and I are 47 years old. We work out seven days a week. Every day we run two to four miles, then do a 15 minute rowing interval workout, then do strength training, and then go in the sauna for 20 minutes. Although at times we feel like this intense exercise may be doing more harm than good, we also don't want to shortchange ourselves and not do everything possible to stay fit and in shape. Are we being less effective by doing as much as we are doing? So Diane, bioindividuality, your body might be equipped to be able to exercise like this. My issue is that it may just be too many days, seven days a week, right? You may just need a day or two days off and you just walk for a half hour to an hour of those days because I know that you and your husband obviously like to stay active. I think, okay, so let me rephrase that. Um, I know from the research, but I think or have a hunch in your case that you may be creating too much oxidative stress and aging the body faster. Now, I always like to put that to the test. I would run a biological age test. They are now available. Let me just check the date of the release of this show because I only record them about a week in the future. And that's it. Uh, Let's see. 429, this comes out. The high performance health course and the Biological Age Lab have already launched. All right, you can find those at highperformancehealth.org. Check it out. I don't want to go into it here today, Um, but you want to just make sure that you are not creating too much oxidative stress in your body. So like if you're doing a long intermittent fast, you're doing like only one or two meals a day, you're not supplementing, you're not doing all those things, and you're doing all of this, you know, two to four miles a day, 15 minute intense interval workout and strength training and sauna for 20 minutes, it just might be too much. That's all. So what a lot of people do, and I can't tell you exactly for you because I have to look at your labs, I need to look at all those things and aging, et cetera. Uh, We often do strength training, cardio day, strength training, cardio day. Sometimes we do strength training, cardio day, day off, strength training, cardio day, day off. And the day off is typically then a longer rejuvenation protocol. And we do sauna four to five days a week. Uh, I think that we need to see first if there is a lot of uh, oxidative stress happening. And if there is, okay, then yes, it's just too much in one day. I mean, you're doing amazing, amazing, right? I don't want to stop it, but you might be doing too much. So what we'll do is we'll kind of break them down into different days and just allow the body to heal. You know, we might do zone two workouts for your cardio and then up to zone three, four, and maybe even higher for your interval workouts. All right, so hopefully that gets you started. But let's find out, right? Let's not guess. Let's just see if you're aging uh, faster than one year per chronological year or year or less. I, I should probably do a podcast. Nobody has any idea what I'm talking about right now uh, for the biological age test. So why don't I do that for, let's see if I can do it for next Thursday. Uh, I actually have a podcast on biological aging. So you can always ask for that, that podcast too, biological aging lab test. All right. Thank you, Diane. I mean, all these questions lead to more podcasts. That's what it's all about. People always ask, aren't you running out of ideas after 2,640 podcasts? And the answer is no, I actually have a list of over 100 different podcast topics uh, that I want to get to. And more get added every week. So I don't think I'll ever be able to actually complete the list. All right, let's see. Simon is up next. Hi, Dr. Ball. I recently heard recent. I recently heard on bodybuilding podcasts that heavy weightlifting sessions can result in systemic inflammation throughout the body and increase intestinal permeability, and therefore anything you ingest at this time might make its way into the bloodstream. The conclusion was that anything you regularly consume during or immediately after a head workout, hard workout, might result in the body forming intolerances to that substance. Is there any validity in these claims? I'm conscious that the things I ingest around workouts, glutamine, fruit, WPI, are staple supplements and foods for me, and I don't want to form intolerance. P.S. I suffer from intestinal permeability and IBS, so this is a particular concern for me. Thanks. Okay, so, well, let me put your your fears a little bit uh, at ease. Uh, I don't know that this will, but we'll talk about it. So, 
any high stress on the body can increase intestinal permeability. All right, let me just state it again. Any high stress on the body, anything, like alcohol, too much alcohol in a night, big stress at work, fight with a spouse or friend or coworker, uh, really hard weightlifting session. Yes, it can increase the intestinal permeability. That's, that's well proven. Um, but the good news is this. Uh, there's degrees of intestinal permeability. It's not necessarily right after a hard workout because that inflammation, to be honest with you, is going to last for three, four hours up to maybe 36 hours after your workout. So it's not like, yeah, it, it happens, but it would have to be a really intense session. And it's actually not just heavy weightlifting. It's not. It's, um, it's, too, it's hard workouts to failure. You'd be just as likely to get that type of stress from a HIIT workout rather than heavy weightlifting, which to be honest with you, it depends if you're looking at more of a neurological lift, like one to five reps uh, versus maybe something more, uh, I don't know, it's still going to get tissue breakdown there. So yeah, you're just looking at tissue breakdown and a lot of inflammation in the body. Honestly, I would not be overly concerned about that. I would fix your intestinal permeability and IBS and I would run the gut bundle. Like that's what I would do because you can fix that. So if you run the gut bundle, uh, I think you'll find it at stephencabral.com forward slash labs. If not, just stephencabral.com forward slash shop. You'll find your food sensitivities. Uh, you'll see if you have parasites, H. pylori, bacteria, or yeast. And you'll be able to fix those things. I mean, honestly, you will. And then you'll work on the stress that may also be causing the IBS and the uh, intestinal permeability. All right? It's a good question. Really good question. All right, Ryan is up. Is that already our last question? One, two, three, four, five. Well, we'll see. Uh, first... Ryan says, first, I would like to thank you for taking the time to provide our community with the Cabral Concept. It's such a wonderful free resource on all things health. Your podcast has helped me in my personal journey as well as helped me learn and be better able to pass on my knowledge to friends and family. Happy to hear that, Ryan. That is literally what it's all about. My goal is to create a running archive of all open sourced Q&A answers um, and also the protocols that I use in my practice and people can do with it as they feel fit. And, you know, and that's the goal. It's just like I try to say after every show, please share this with other people. That's it. It's all free. You know, share it. The, my book, The Rain Barrel Effect, is as free as I can make it. I, I pay for the book. It costs me a little over $7 to print it. I just ask that people pay for the shipping. You know, that's it. It's typically like $7.95 for shipping. So, all right, let's 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 see what Ryan says. My questions have to do with microdosing psilocybin, brain health, and neurogenesis. What is your take on it? And do you have strong objections to it besides the legality? If you were to microdose, would you suggest taking any supplements to help, such as uh, stamen stack? I don't actually know the stack, but I know what you're talking about because I, I know the lion's mane and the um, B3 and other things that are used, or any supplements to support any depleted nutrients. Thanks again. Okay, so I am not against uh, microdosing psilocybin. I just, or I'm not against uh, ketamine. I'm not against really any of those things that could help people with mental health um, based issues. I don't recommend it for people that don't need it. To be honest, it's like that's that's the truth. It's like I don't recommend. Um, I don't even think that you need to use CBD or THC or anything if you don't need it, right? Like if you don't need it, then you don't need it, and so we're not going to add it to the body. It's a supplement. That that's how I'm looking at it. But this is more of a treatment, right? So I always ask though that if you're going to do psilocybin, you're doing this for a very specific reason, most likely. And I would love people to be doing counseling or therapy at the same time. I think that should be a prerequisite. Um, you want to work on childhood trauma. You want to work on things that, that may have never been, that are regressed and may have never been, I should say, repressed and have never been uh, fully worked on. So, uh, yes, and I, mean, I think one day it will be legal and it is legal right now in a few different states under the care of a practitioner and, and I think that that's a great way to do it. So that is that. I just, uh, I'm very leery of people staying on it for too long and becoming dependent. I, I always recommend something like the Daily Foundational Protocol, which already contains all of your methylated vitamins, your methyl donors like trimethylglycine. Uh, it's going to have specific detox factors because these things all have to be processed by the liver. So that's how I look at it as well. And then if you want to add something like lion's mane, 
uh, which is a, a basically a, I don't want to say medicinal, but a, a form of mushroom, uh, it could be fantastic as well. So I have no issues with those. I don't know that I've seen people use lion's mane and I think, I think there can be something to it. So I'm certainly not against that. So all that to say that this is an emerging field. I've talked with many experts in this space, actually all around the world. And some of them will be speaking at this October's live event. I haven't shared the details on that yet, but coming next week, I'll probably be talking more. And uh, this is going to be bringing together the very best people in their fields uh, to sunny Florida this coming October. It's the very first live event I've ever done for non-practitioners. So this is the public. I really want to meet our community. That's the truth. That's why I'm putting on this event. I'm putting on uh, a big event, and it's just for our community. It's not advertised anywhere else. And um, anyway, I'm excited to share that with you next week. So Ryan, I appreciate the question. We're going to keep it at that for today, but I will be back tomorrow answering more of our community's questions. Take care, everybody. Hope you're enjoying the weekend. I want to sincerely thank you for your support of this podcast. I couldn't do it without you, and I mean that. I truly do. I also want to make sure you knew that we now have multiple ways for you to find your answers to the most difficult health, wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging questions. You can find podcast-specific topics like thyroid, adrenal, hormones, sleep, digestion, Ayurveda, and many more at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts that will then link you to your favorite Apple, Spotify, and other podcast players. Plus, all new podcasts and weekly exclusive video content is being added to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. And that's Stephen with a PH. Head on over and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the exclusive content. Lastly, if you've ever found any of my podcasts or books to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a review on iTunes or your favorite media player for the podcast. Rating and subscribing to the YouTube and podcast allow me to reach more and more people and help spread my mission of healing throughout the world. Thank you again for being a part of this movement.